In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about direct products of cyclic groups. So the notation we will use is C sub n. This is the cyclic group of order n. And there's a statement in algebra that says the following. If you have the cyclic group of order m sub 1, and you take the direct product of that with another cyclic group of, say, order m sub 2, and you just take a direct product of k cyclic groups. Why k? I don't know. I just picked k. So what we have here is a direct product. This is the cyclic group of order m sub 1. This is the cyclic group of order m sub 2. And this is the cyclic group of order m sub k. And the statement in algebra says that this is cyclic if and only if the orders of the cyclic groups are pairwise relatively prime. So if this list of integers is pairwise relatively prime. What does it mean for this list of integers to be pairwise relatively prime? It means if you take any two and you compute the greatest common divisor, you should get one. All right, let's do a couple examples. We'll start with easy examples. So example, let's look at the cyclic group of order three and we'll take the direct product of that with the cyclic group of order 5. So in this case, the orders are 3 and 5. So if we take the greatest common divisor of the orders, we get 1. That means that 3 and 5 are relatively prime. Okay, so this group is cyclic. So we do have a cyclic group. Right? We do have a cyclic group. Let's do another example. Let's look at maybe the cyclic group of order 2, and we'll take the direct product of that with the cyclic group of order 12. So in this case, the orders are 2 and 12. So if you take the greatest common divisor of 2 and 12, so you ask yourself, what is the largest integer that divides both 2 and 12? Well, 2. Well, that's not equal to 1. So 2 and 12 are not relatively prime. I'll just write rel prime. So our group is not cyclic, right? Not cyclic. Now, so far, we've only looked at two examples, and in both examples, we only had two factors, right? These are called factors of the direct product. So we only had two factors, but in our statement, we had k factors. So let's raise the uh, bar a little bit. Let's actually do something a little more interesting. So how about this example here? Let's look at the cyclic group of order 5. We'll take the direct product of that with the cyclic group of order 7 and in the cyclic group of order 13. Okay, so here the orders are 5, 7, and 13. So if you compute the GCD of any two of these numbers, you should get one. So look, GCD of 5 and 7. So what is the largest integer which divides 5 and 7? 1. Likewise, you can look at 5 and 13, and you still get 1. Or you can look at, let's say, what's missing, 7 and 13, and you still get 1. So these integers, 5, 7, and 13, so 5, 7, 13, the orders of the factors, 5, 7, and 13, are pairwise relatively prime. So our group this time is cyclic. Okay, it is cyclic. So if it happens that maybe one of the GCDs is not equal to 1, then it's not cyclic. So it's got to be true for every possible pair, right? You have to get 1 uh, for any possible combination of GCDs that you take. Let's try another one. C sub 4, and we'll take the direct product of that with C sub 11, and the direct product of that with C sub 12. In this case, um, well, if you take the GCD of 4 and 11, you get 1. But... There is one GCD here 
that is not going to give us 1. And that's the GCD of 4 and 12. You ask yourself, what's the greatest integer that divides both 4 and 12? 4. It's not equal to 1. So 4, 11, and 12 are not pairwise relatively prime. So this is not a cyclic group. So now you see two examples on the screen, and I think hopefully it makes a little more sense. So in this example here, we had 5, 7, and 13, and they were pairwise relatively prime. Because if you take the GCD of any two of the numbers in this list, you get 1. And that's what it means to be pairwise relatively prime, or any two different numbers, right? You, can, you don't want to take the GCD of uh, 5 and 5. That's just 5. So that would be silly. Uh, so if you take the GCD of any two of these, when I say two of these, I mean different, and you get 1, then they're pairwise relatively prime, and so it's cyclic. In this case, um, these numbers are not pairwise relatively prime, because if you take, for example, the GCD of 4 and 12, uh, you don't get 1, you get 4. Okay, let's do maybe one more. So how about the cyclic group of order 3 with the cyclic group of order 5 with the cyclic group of order 7 with the cyclic group of order uh, 17 with the cyclic group of order... Oh, this is getting hard. Uh, let's see. I need a number here that will work. Cyclic group of order... Hmm. Yeah, 22. That should work. Uh, what, do you, what do I mean by that should work? Well, these should be pairwise relatively prime. So 3... 5, 7, 17, and 22. If you take the GCD of any two of these, you should get one. So these guys are pairwise relatively prime. So this group here, this is actually cyclic. Right? This is a, a cyclic group. I hope this helps.